Hi there. Uh, I wanted to just do a short video uh, highlighting uh, my HP uh, 437B uh, power meter and showing you uh, uh, the new sensor that I just uh, acquired. And uh, the reason I wanted to do this was uh, I also wanted to try out the video camera that uh, my wife, uh, my lovely wife, was uh, good enough to buy for me for my birthday uh, just recently. So uh, please accept my apologies if the lighting isn't uh, great. I haven't quite worked out how best to light uh, the scene yet. Anyway, let's uh, go back to the 437B. The 437B is a, a power meter. It's part of the, the venerable uh, 4.3 line uh, of uh, uh, Hewlett Packard power meters. It started with the 4.35 uh, meter and then the 4.36 and then the 4.37 and then the next one after this was the 4.38 and that was the end of the 4.3 series power meters and we went uh, into the EPM range, uh, I think. And uh, uh, I've had uh, the 4.35, the 4.36 and the 4.37. Uh, the 4.35 is a classic uh, old meter, uh, brilliant at doing its, its job, uh, but it didn't have a, a lot of the new features that uh, uh, the 3.6 and the 3.7 had. Uh, but uh, uh, the 437 came out and you know, I managed to acquire one of these quite cheaply. I think I got it on eBay for like $25 or $30. Uh, very happy with this meter. It has basically the set of functions that I need to use here. Uh, the accuracy is good. And one of the cool things that this particular um, meter introduced uh, was the ability for you to actually store uh, the sensor profiles. And we'll get to the sensor profile just in a moment. Uh, but that ability to store the sensor profiles meant that you could let the meter work out uh, what the calibration factor was. All right, so why did I get uh, need to get a new sensor? Well, the original sensor that I had uh, is this guy here. And uh, if we have a look in, uh, you can see that this is uh, an 8481 uh, power sensor. And this guy's a great sensor. It's thermocouple based. It works on the whole uh, um, concept uh, of you know, taking a microwave power and then dissipating it in a, a thermocouple and reading a, a, a DC offset voltage that will come out of that. Um, and that's slightly different, or that's a, a new way of, of doing it um, uh, compared to the old 432s uh, with the 478 uh, thermistors. Uh, that were very uh, classical uh, approach. And in fact, uh, funnily enough, the 432 with the 478A uh, uh, thermistor mount is still recommended as the calibration standard for calibrating the power reference here and we'll have a look at how that works uh, in a minute. Anyway, this was a new uh, approach that was taken to uh, take advantage of the solid state electronics that were now available to, um, uh, uh, to the, the uh, HP designers. And uh, this can go from minus 30 uh, dBm up to 20 dBm. Well, I recently uh, restored a, uh, a Rodenschwartz uh, SME03 signal generator that I got off eBay. Again, I got a, a pretty smoking deal uh, on it, not working. Uh, replaced some batteries, fixed up some card connections, a little bit of deoxid. Um, the output attenuator was uh, uh, broken, and so I had to fix the output attenuator. But that actually turned out to be just a matter of uh, touching, you know, in cleaning up some contacts and. Uh, bending some springs to give a little bit more uh, power to the to the spring action. Anyway, I brought it back and it uh, seems to work great. And to test the output ranges, I would connect my power meter up to uh, the SME03 and I look at to see how close I was to the uh, uh, to the spec for the uh, for the signal generator. Well, that's great. I can get down to minus 30 uh, dBm here. But the signal generator goes uh, way down and goes a, a lot further than that. So I happened to be looking at uh, eBay and I discovered uh, uh, this unit. Or I saw this unit for a great price. It was about $250. Uh, an 8484A power sensor. And uh, this guy goes from 70 d minus 70 dBm to minus 20 dBm. So uh, it covers a lot more of the bottom uh, end of the spectrum. Now it's a, a different type of... Um, uh, a, a different type of design in here and uh, you can get information about the designs at the HP Journal Archive um, on it. This was thermocouple. This is a diode detector design uh, and it gave it uh, a lot more sensitivity. Uh, but what it does is it actually uh, works on the, uh, on the fact that these diodes uh, detectors can operate as a square law device 
in a linear region, which is uh, 70 to minus 20 uh, dBm. And we can use that to detect uh, uh, the power and feed that back into the, to the meter here. Uh, they actually go non-linear above 20 dBm. And, and uh, the cool thing about the 8484A uh, uh, is that it actually the, takes a, a maximum power input of, I think, plus 23 dBm. Uh, you know, which is uh, because of the diodes compared to these thermistors, which will blow very, very easily if you exceed their max power rating. Uh, but what that means is that uh, while it operates only to minus 20 for that square device uh, linear region, if you accidentally feed it 10 dB or 15 dB, the device itself is going to be capable of withstanding that. So there should be a lot less chance of this actually getting blown up. So let's take a look at how we would actually use that. Uh, and we'll start with the 8481A and let me turn on uh, the meter. The meter comes on, it goes through a self-test and, and the look and feel here is a lot like the classic uh, HP digital meter, uh, uh, multimeters. The, I think it's the 3478A uh, multimeter thing but it uses the same case, the same format, uh, the same sort of display and so on. Now these devices are basically uh, reference type of devices. You can set them anywhere and measure a reference to how it works. And so you have to be able to uh, calibrate them to a known uh, value. So you can say that this particular sensor at this particular input power will generate this particular uh, DC voltage that I can then say is in fact um, uh, 0 dBm or 10 dBm or minus 20 dBm. And that voltage, if we have a look at this sensor here, you can see that there is this list of figures. That voltage and that apparent power will change with frequency. So when you're using these sensors, you need to tell the meter what frequency are you actually uh, uh, feeding into it so that we can now appropriately tweak the, the value. And I mentioned this a little earlier, that the reason that I like the Force 37B is that I can take this set of, uh, of calibration factors they're called and program it into the meter and then tell the meter uh, that uh, um, I'm detecting this particular frequency. So let's get the meter up and, and running. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect uh, my sensor and we'll just screw it on to the end of the, the power here and let me just simply reset the, uh, the, the meter here and now I'm going to connect my sensor to the actual to the power reference that's in uh, the device here. So now I'm all set here. The last thing that I need to do is to, before I start the zeroing calibration process is I need to select the particular sensor. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to say, okay, I want sensor zero. And if we zoom in, you'll see that I have this already loaded up, uh, the HP 8481A. And so I'm going to say that's the sensor I want. I'm going to select that, I'm going to set uh, the frequency here should be 50 megahertz, we can see that, that's great. Um, so now I'm going to tell it to zero and what we're doing right now is uh, the system is going through and looking at that couple, that thermocouple and basically taking the bridge and zeroing the bridge uh, voltages so that it knows what the zero value is for that particular uh, sensor. So great, there we go, we're now zeroed. So now we have to calibrate uh, this. So I'm gonna select shift and then cal. And you can see that it's come up with 100%. And for this particular sensor at 50 megahertz, which is what the this um, uh, internal reference runs at, this is actually 100%. So when I set that, when I go and measure against that at 100%, and now we're finished doing that. And if I actually just go in and I turn that, that power reference on, um, what we should see up here is 0 dBm coming out. If we look at that, it should be 1 milliwatt. So that's now all set up. And what I can now do is I could take this uh, uh, sensor and go and put it on uh, my Roger Schwartz signal generator and start measuring the power output at the various different uh, points. But I don't, necessarily, I don't want to do that because um, I've already done it and I know that my... I, my generator is pretty good from minus 30 to plus 
I think 15 or 16 is the uh, maximum that it goes to. So instead, what I want to do is start testing some of the lower values. So let me connect the, the new sensor. Now, this new sensor goes from minus 70 to minus 20 dBm. And as soon as I put it on the machine, you can see that it's de detected that I've changed the sensors. And how it does that is that there's actually a resistor in here, and there's an ADC in the unit, and it basically can read the resistance value, and it knows what uh, sensor that it has to put uh, uh, to connect it. So now I'm going to go zero this, and it's always best practice to connect it up first and get it into circuit and then zero it. Um, but you're probably already thinking, well, how do you take a minus 20 dBm value and zero it against a zero dBm uh, item here, given that you need to be below 20 dBm to operate in the square law region. Well, how you do it is by attaching this device, and this is an 11708A uh, reference attenuator. It's designed specifically for this job of taking this power here from one milliwatt and turning it down to one microwatt. And it's designed just for the reference. And in fact, in the manual, they will tell you that if you use this for anything else other than just simply doing this reference, you'll cause the heat death of the universe and horrible things will happen and, and so on. So uh, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to go do is let, let me uh, turn that power reference off. Let me select my sensor because I've already actually loaded the sensor data. And so if we zoom in, you'll see that I have the 8484A selected. So I'm going to do that. It's telling me to please zero. So Let's just simply attach this on here. So we have it on there. We have it all on there now. So now what I'm going to go do is I'm going to tell it to, uh, to zero. And now it will go and zero the, uh, the dive detector. It will uh, uh, bring it all back uh, and get it all ready. Then we'll be able to calibrate uh, the system. Okay, so now uh, if we look at the frequency, I still have it set for 50 megahertz, which is what we're seeing here. And so if I now do Cal, what you'll see is that the Cal reference here is now 94%. And that's the Cal reference for this particular uh, sensor. And so if I select Enter, there we go, I've gone and done that. And if I bring up that power reference, we should see minus 30 dBm, one microwatt there. So now I can turn that power reference off. You know, disconnect my sensor here, remove the, um, the reference attenuator, and then let's connect this into my uh, Roden Schwartz. signal generator. Now I have the Roden Schwartz signal generator set for 250 megahertz so I need to come in back in here and tell it that I want it to be 250 megahertz. Now the cool thing about putting the sensor profile in the 437B is that uh, if you don't have an actual value on the item here that relates to it and if you will look to this guy here I have 50 megahertz then 500 what this device will do is actually interpolate what the value should be from the two closest points that are that are around it. And that will uh, get you a value and uh, uh, get a pretty close uh, item. Little trick for the unwary is that when you're actually um, uh, shifting from different types of sensors, uh, you need to make sure that you act, your sensor actually has a cal factor, uh, a reference cal factor setting in. Uh, I had the 8484 set in and uh, because it's 94% what was happening was uh, as soon as it finished the calibration process it would then apply the interpolated value from my minimum half gigahertz uh, value and the zero which was actually less than what the calibration factor was so I was always reading high and I didn't quite get that until I realized oh okay go into the sensor data, create a 50 megahertz entry and just put the reference calibration factor in there. And that way when you're out of calibration, you'll start reading the, uh, the correct value. So let's put in enter there. 
let's go back to DBM and you'll see that I'm reading about minus 70 uh, to DBM there let me just turn the uh, meter on and if I set minus 50 oh, so level minus 50 dB you'll see that I'm reading you know, minus 50 dB so I'm pretty close uh, down to about minus 50 dB in terms of how the attenuator and that's working so that's just a short uh, uh, overview of how you would use uh, a 437 uh, and uh, a sensor. There are a bunch of other capabilities on here, setting the duty cycle, uh, going in and setting uh, how you hold, um, all of the information about uh, being relative. You know, if you set rel, you'll get uh, off there. If you can see these on uh, eBay, they're usually fairly cheap. I quite like them. Where you'll pay is uh, in the sensors. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much. Catch you later. Bye.